Hi and welcome to Vintage Doll Collector. Today I want to share with you a whole bunch of vintage dolls, clothing, and accessories I picked up recently. There's a wide variety here, but most are from the 50s and 60s. First I want to show you Skipper's Dream Room. This cardboard structure was sold by Mattel in 1965 and 66, so Barbie's little sister could have a place of her own. It's pretty compact when folded up. But when you open it all the way out, it's pretty massive. It consists of two rooms, the bedroom on the left and the playroom on the right. The bedroom has a built-in vanity and closet on one wall, with plenty of room for the vanity stool, twin bed, and chair. The mirror is printed on the wall. This set has tons of cool accessories, including the cardboard rag doll you see on the bed. There are slots in the wall to hold the photos of Skipper's friends. The pillows are pieces of foam rubber with a piece of fabric glued to each side. The other half of the structure is the playroom. I'm only missing a few pieces to the set, including the flooring for the front part here. The table has a game board and play money printed on the top. On the desk you can see some more of the accessories, a little portable TV and a telephone and a framed picture of Barbie. The shelves printed on the wall have pictures of Midge and Ken. Mattel took advantage of some of the graphics to promote their other toys. This shelf shows their talking Porky Pig doll. At the other end of the house, a shelf pictures Mattel's talking Bugs Bunny, Larry the Lion, and the Barbie musical guitar. Here are some more of the cool accessories that came with the Dream Room. These Barbie magazines picturing Barbies around the world outfits. And this is my absolute favorite, the record player with eight tiny cardboard record album covers. They include the Beach Boys Little Deuce Coop and Surfer Girl, Meet the Beatles, The Music Man Soundtrack, Summer Surf by Dick Dale, A World Without Love by Peter and Gordon, The Kingston Trio Back in Town, and Donna Lynn, which included a song called My Boyfriend Got a Beetle Haircut. So cool. On the outside of the dream room, there's room on either side for a little bench. I also got some of Barbie's go-together furniture from the same period. The original foam rubber cushions on the chair and ottoman have long since disintegrated. This set included some cute accessories too. I love the little clock radio. Also got a couple of accessories for Barbie outfits. The blue and green sunglasses go to Bobby and Ken's skiing outfits. Here's a couple of dolls that I got in a lot I bought on Craigslist. They came from the original owner who had them when she was a kid in the 1960s. This one is an unmarked PlayPal type doll. She's a walker, but her walking mechanism doesn't work anymore. She does have a really pretty face and her original shoes, which is nice. I don't have room for a doll this size. She's 35 inches tall, so she'll be going to the antique shop where I have a booth. The Cupid doll is marked Cameo on her head and body. She's 27 inches tall. Initially, I thought she was redressed, but then I found other examples online in the exact same outfit. Rose O'Neill, the designer of the Cupies, meant for them to be boys, but in later years of production, they were often dressed as girls. These two dolls representing Native American people were designed by Ruben Tejada and produced by Sandy Dolls in the 1990s. This one is Flying Falcon. His clothing and face paint represents an Assiniboine warrior from the mid to late 19th century. And this one is Leaping Water. She's dressed as an Apache princess of the early 19th century. These are really great dolls. I like that some thought was put into making them historically accurate. This is a Stife Mohair hand puppet of a tiger. Unfortunately, he's missing the button in his ear, but he's still very nice. These two Ginny dolls are pretty played with. I got quite a few outfits with them, most with Mark Ginny shoes. I was able to identify most of them with the Vogue book. I also got Ginny's bed and chair. This little sweetie is a ginger by Cosmopolitan, who was made as a competitor for Ginny. 
This doll also came with clothing. I don't have a book to identify the outfits with, but fortunately Ginger's clothes are mostly all tagged. And here are quite a few clothes for Ginny and Ginger sized dolls that are not tagged and I was not able to identify. See anything you recognize? This is a very different 8 inch doll. She was made in Japan of a plaster type composition. Although she was meant to be Shirley Temple, she wasn't made under license so she's not an official Shirley Temple doll. I got a whole bunch of these Anna Lee dolls at an auction. They're cute, but most doll collectors aren't that interested in them. They do make great holiday decorations, though. These were all made in New Hampshire before the company moved production to China, which I think was around 2000. Although I do collect dolls made in New England, I don't have room to keep them all. I might keep a Santa or two, and maybe one of the adorable reindeer. I'm definitely keeping these three. They're all characters from A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which is one of my favorite books. This is Bob Cratchit and Tiny Tim. Here's Scrooge after he's had his change of heart. He's got the Christmas goose in the basket there. And here's Jacob Marley's ghost with his chains and ledger book. There were a couple of non-Christmas dolls in the lot too. This powder box doll is very unusual. And here's a little Easter bunny with his basket. As Monty Python would say, and now for something completely different. These dolls were made by Mego in the late 1970s in the likenesses of the members of the rock band Kiss. The guy with the long tongue is Gene Simmons. In more recent years, he's become known for his reality TV show. The one with the star over one eye is Paul Stanley. And the one with stars over both eyes is Ace Frehley. The one I'm missing is Peter Chris. He had face paint that looked kind of like a dog. They have multi-jointed action figure type bodies. This is a Unita Dollykin from the late 1950s in an original outfit which is a white blouse, plaid pants, and a felt vest with the collar made from the pants fabric. This outfit is usually found with a blue and green plaid with a red vest. This tan and black version with the rust vest is much harder to find. Together with the dollykin, I got this hard plastic doll also from the 50s. I think she's probably an R&B, although she's not marked. Isn't she beautiful? I have to find her something to wear. This sweet 8 inch vinyl baby doll is also unmarked. She came with a bunch of clothing, some of which is tagged for Vogue's Jeanette doll, some of which belongs to Cosmopolitan's baby Ginger, and some I'm not sure about. Check out these Jeanette shoes in the original box. Here's Bob. He was made by Unita in the late 50s as a boyfriend for their Suzette and Tiny Teen dolls. He's not the handsomest boy doll I've ever seen, but he does have some nice outfits. The leopard print swimsuit and jacket is what he came in originally. He's 11 inches tall. Switching gears for a minute, I want to show you this Shackman lady doll. She has a porcelain head. They were sold undressed, but somebody made her this really nice dress and underwear. It's not removable, otherwise I'd show you her jointed wooden body. She was made in Japan. Here's a compo doll, probably from the late 20s or early 30s. She has tin eyes and a mohair wig, or what's left of it. She was loved a little too hard. One arm is almost coming off. Check out this blue-haired troll doll. She's actually a bank. See the slot in her back? Although I don't see any way to get the money out once you put it in. There's no rubber stopper or anything like that. Maybe the head was supposed to come off. This big girl is Lonely Lisa, made by the Royal Doll Company from the 1960s. You can see she was very much influenced by the paintings of big-eyed children done by Margaret Keane. I don't think this is her original dress. She has a cloth body under here, with wired arms and legs, so she's somewhat poseable. Here's another Royal Doll with big eyes. This one's named Joy. I usually show you these dolls just as I got them, but she was so filthy I had to clean her up first. This is her original Alice in Wonderland outfit. I do have to find her some shoes. This is Ideal's vinyl head version of Saucy Walker. Unfortunately, her walking mechanism is broken, but her crier still works. Okay, one more big-eyed doll before we go. This is Hasbro's Little Miss No Name, made in 1965. She's the ultimate waif, dressed in burlap rags, and she holds her hand palm up like she's begging. She originally had a tear on her cheek, which made her even more pitiful. 
Most people find Little Miss No Name kind of creepy, but she has a devoted following of fans and even her own Facebook group. Thanks for joining me today. Which item was your favorite? Have you added any new vintage dolls to your collection lately? Leave me a comment and let me know. If you'd like to be notified when I post new videos, click the subscribe button and the little bell icon. See you next time.